Hi, Avril here from Access Credit Union. We are delighted to once again sponsor the Star Sports Podcast. As part of our range of new business loans, we now offer Cultivate Farm Finance, the farmer-friendly loan package. With a Cultivate loan, farmers in West Cork can benefit from the local decision-making and personal service offered by Access Credit Union. To find out more, go to accesscu.ie forward slash cultivate, call me on 085 268 2727 or 028 21883, where a member of our team will be happy to help you with your inquiry. Close your eyes and pull like down. <laughs> And a new Irish record for Phil Healy, 22.99. Christy Cooney hands over the Sam McGuire Cup to Graham Canty, Cork All-Ireland Champions for the seventh time ever. Hello and welcome to the Star Sport Podcast. My name is Jack McCarran of the Southern Star and I'm joined as always by Star Sport Editor Kieran McCarthy. Before we kick things off I'd just like to give a gentle reminder to our listeners and viewers to please rate, review and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and YouTube. The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you in association with our friends at Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, where your bank really does matter. Choose the credit union, choose local, choose community the beamish cup takes center stage on this week's podcast as we chat to clonic guilty manager john leahy following their semi-final win over defending champions dun manway town last weekend the brewery town will take on liar rovers in the decider in a couple of weeks as they look to bounce back from losing the final at turner's cross just last season liar overcame riverside in their semi-final but Kieran, there was big news yesterday in the Kerry media relating to the hashtag Park Erin or Nowhere saga that we've been covering the past few weeks. So we might as well start there again. What are the cute whores saying in the kingdom? Those cute whores across the county bounds are saying that it could be Park Erin and it looks like Park Erin on May 7th. So the the Kerry media and the Kerry fans will have to pack their sandwiches in the flask of tea and, and head up to Cork and fight for parking outside Park Your Ring. That's what it looks like. So hopefully we'll have white smoke quite soon. And that's what I'm hearing as well. Maybe even this week or the next couple of days that the Munster Council will make an announcement on, on the venue for the game on, on May 7th. But it looks increasingly like it, it will be Park Your Ring. As far as, as far as I know, what I've been told, it won't be Fitzgerald Stadium. I think Fitzgerald Stadium has been ruled out um, there's still talks of a neutral venue, Turles or the Gaelic grounds. But when you consider that the Cork footballers made their stance, they, they said it's parking we're going over. This is where we're playing the game or we're not playing it at all. Um, looks like the Munster Council could, could bow to the pressure and fix the game for parking ring. And like we said before, I think that's the, the, right, the correct decision, the right decision, fix the game for parking ring. So hopefully we'll have news quite soon. But as of now, it looks increasingly likely that... Cork, Kerry, Munster semi-final, May 7th, Parky Ring. If the ambition for taking the game out of Parky Ring was to pump up the attendance figures and in turn improve the coffers of the Munster Council, you'd have to assume taking it to a uh, Thurless or the Gaelic Grounds would not work in that regard because you can't imagine that if Cork footballers were to take on Kerry and Thurless, there would be more than the eleven or 12,000 limit that we reckon Parky Rin would have? Or could you see uh, a, a full house in Turles for this game? I very much doubt it. No, I couldn't know. Like, even if the game was on in Killarney, um, it's, it's a monster semi-final. And even when you factor in the David Clifford factor, which people have mentioned to me since, uh, people want to go and see David Clifford in action. We've got to remember, this is a monster semi-final. It's not even a monster final. So in Killarney, maybe we've got 17, 18,000. But that's a guess. Maybe you get a couple thousand more. Um, but if this game was in Killarney, by the end of it, you would have less than 11,000 there if it goes according to the script that we've seen the last two times Kerry and Cork have met in Killarney, which was the McGrath Cup final back in January and last year's uh, Munster Senior Football Final. So from day one, we've said in this podcast that Parky Ring is the best venue for this game when we knew that Parky Cueve was unavailable because of the Ed Sheeran concerts. 
get 11,000 people into Park Your Ring, make a proper event, a proper championship occasion, pack the ground out, 11,000. 11,000 in Park Your Ring in a packed stadium there will feel like a lot more, generate a lot more noise and atmosphere and excitement than 18,000 down in Killarney who'd be spread all around the stadium or 18,000 in Turles or the Gaelic grounds because let's say it did go to a neutral venue, you'd have to ask how many Cork fans would travel. I'll be quite honest here, we've seen how low the numbers of attendances have been at the Cork football games this year. Um, if the game is on in Cork, you ring, you'll have more Cork fans there. But if the game is moved to neutral venue, I, I couldn't see too many Cork fans travelling for that. So like, like we're saying now, it looks increasingly like Park you ring. And that's good news for the Cork footballers. They made their stand and hopefully they'll get the result they want. And hopefully the Cork County Board can learn from their bad habits and not book an Ed Sheeran concert on the same weekend of a championship clash with Kerry in the future. Kieran, we're going to chat soccer in a moment and we're going to hear from Clonakilty Soccer Club manager John Leahy. But before we do, I want to ask you about the book launch you attended at the Celtic Ross Hotel in Ross Carberry last night because friend of the show, Ger McCarthy, was launching his new book. It was the LGFA Game of My Life. And there seemed to be a huge attendance and a great buzz around the Celtic Cross for this launch because I saw lots of pictures on Twitter. Shane Renane, the Cork Ladies Football Manager, was there. Uh, a lot of the players who were also involved in the book with Jur were there. So, yeah, maybe give us a, a brief summation of the night's events and tell us about Jur's book. And again, just uh, I hope we'll have Jur on the podcast in the next number of weeks to chat about it as well. Yeah, for those watching our podcast on YouTube, I'm holding a copy of it now and a copy that I got signed from Jura, of course, the author. But of the 10 Cork ladies footballers who were there past and present, I got them to sign it as well. And like we said, a great attendance at the Celtic Ross last night and great for, for Jura to see such a big crowd turn out to support his book. And this is part of Hero Books Game of My Life series. And Dennis Hurley, um, another friend of the show, he has the, the Cork hurling equivalent out at the moment as well. And the Cork Camogie and the Cork football versions are, are due in the next 12 months. So basically, Joe McCarthy's um, Cork LGFA game of my life, he's talked to 25 Cork ladies footballers, past and present, about the game of their life. So it goes from inter-county games to club games. It's the game that stands out for them, that the game that sticks in their memory. And a great thing from a West Cork point of view, there's a lot of West Cork players um, featured in this, from, from the great Nolly Cleary to... Orla Finn and Kinsale, Emma Spillane from Bantry, Anya Terry O'Sullivan down in, in Alahis, Martino O'Brien, Melissa Duggan from Donnie's, and we featured an extract from her chapter in, in last week's book. So it's a really good read, really good read. And George did a superb job here. And at the launch last night, 10 of the footballers who, who feature in this book were there, including the great Juliet Murphy. And she is one of the, the, the greats of Cork GA, not just um, women's GA, but Cork GA in general. And I was chatting to her there, but we were chatting about road bowling, Jack, um, because Juliet's big in, into road bowling. And she great things actually to say about Hannah Sexton. Um, so we're just chatting about all things road bowling. And Hannah Sexton is now um, up at the senior level, the Tim League teenager. And Juliet is tipping Hannah for great things. She said she, she played her last year and she said she really is one to watch. And just on that, Hannah Sexton won her first score in the senior championship just, just last week. So she's already making making strides at that level. But with Ju Juliet Murphy there, Kira and Darren O'Sullivan travelled down from Moran Abbey, Emma Spillane from Banshee was there, Orla Finn, Melissa Duggan, Martino O'Brien, Shauna Kelly, um, Saoirse Noonan was even there. The, the Cork footballer who's now a, an Irish soccer star was there as well. So it was great to see such a good turnout to support the book. Um, and they all feature in the book. And Shane Ronane officially launched the book. He was there as well. And every, everyone had great things to say about it. And... We feature a lot of books on this on this on this podcast. We talked a lot of authors, um, but this is an important book, I think, in many ways because it's a it's a very important Cork women's sports book. Um, this is the first women's version in the the Game of Our Life series, and it's great to see that the Cork women's footballers sit by side by side in the bookshelf with the Dublin footballers and the Kerry footballers and and the Galway hurlers, and that the that the the, the, the Cork ladies footballers can tell their stories. So. Really well written, really good read. Um, what I like about these books too, it's 25 different stories, so you can hop in and out. You know, it's not from cover to cover. So you might read Melissa Duggan's story one night. The next night, you're going to read what Devon O'Sullivan, what her favorite game was. What about Breed Stack or Breach Corkery or Arena Buckley? So um, Deirdre O'Reilly, 
Giordino Flynn, all these greats are in it. So really good book, really good read. I'd recommend picking one up. And like you said, hopefully we'll have Joe McCarthy on the show quite soon to talk about the book. And also uh, to expand on his kind words about me at the, at the book launch. It was always nice to, to hear George kind of talk nicely about, about my influence on, on George. So he can, there's an open invite there for George to come on and wax lyrical about, about me and the stars. So, um, so hopefully, yeah, we'll have him on quite soon. <clears throat> yeah, great stuff. And just to echo Kieran's comments, the very best of luck to both Jur and Dennis with their books. Kieran, uh, on that note, have you been given the call to write the Cork football one? Or maybe we'll, we 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 leave that. Maybe the, someone else has got the nod in that regard. Uh, don't look too disappointed. Um, but anyway, Kieran, let's switch our attention now to the Beamish Cup because the semi-finals were played. Last weekend, Clonakilty beat defending champions Dunmanway Town, who were on the hunt for their third three or fourth in a row. Three they, were, in a row. they were going for three in a row. And Lyre Rovers overcame Riverside, who had just been promoted last season from the championship and have obviously made a big stamp on the top level in the West Cork League as well. But the team we're going to focus on today is Clonakilty Soccer Club, and we're going to chat to their manager, John Leahy and Kieran, you might be able to give us more background than I can on this, but there were two teams in Clonakilty up until about three years ago, and the sides merged to form Clonakilty Soccer Club, and since then they've become one of the dominant um, outfits in the West Cork League. Exactly, the two teams in Clon joined force to become Clonakilty Soccer Club, and and since then they've challenged, uh, I suppose, the the big two in the West Cork League over the last couple of years, which have been Trina Rangers and Dunmanway Town. And the emergence of Clannacilty Soccer Club is just great news for the West Cork League because even the Beamish Cup aside for a second, let's look at the West Cork League Premier Division. We have a proper title race on our, our, our hands this year. You've Trina out in front, you've Clannacilty in second, and you've Dunmanway Town in third. And all those top teams have to play each other in the league running. And it's going to be touch wood a very exciting climax to the season because even though Trina Rangers are 10 points ahead, of Clan Akilty, Clan have four games in hand and, and Clan have to play Drina again and Clan have home advantage for that game. And there's also games against Dunmanway Town who are who are just a couple of points behind um behind oh sorry Dunmanway Town are actually the same points as as Clan Akilty but have played a game more. So Clan Akilty have shaken up the the, the kind of the the the, the 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 top teams in the West Cork League. They're challenging for for titles and they're true to the Beamish Cup final too. And that's huge news for Clannacilty Soccer Club because they'd lost the last two Beamish Cup finals, both to Domenway Town. So to go out last Sunday, beat Domenway Town 3-2 is a huge boost for them in terms of they've got to the final, but it's a psychological boost too because they've beaten the team who beaten them in the last two Beamish Cup finals. So now that baggage, that monkey's off their back and they can, they'll go into the Beamish Cup final against Lyre as favourites, but they're deservedly favourites too because they've dethroned the champions and they did it the hard way. It was a, a 3-2 win. It was, an, it was an epic win. It was um, you know Driscoll with the with, with the match winning goal and Clannacilty had to put up with some huge um, dynamic pressure towards the end, but they showed great resolve and character to, 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 to see out that game. But it's just good, like I'm saying, Jack, for the West Cork League to have so many good teams competing for the title. I'm thinking back um, over the years for Pordrina could have won the game, won the league with with games to spare, like that's not going to be the case this year, you know. Um, you could do three good teams in the hunt for it, and kind of Kilty have a bit of momentum behind them right now. And um, they've obviously, as a new club, they've never won, they've never won this title. And um, as a new club as well, to get through to the, the Beamish Cup, it's just a final again, is a huge boost to them. And Lyra are back in the cup final for the first time since 2018, so we're going to have new champions crowned this year. Just good news for the. For the for the West Cork League and John Leahy or John Mousy Leahy is one of the characters of of the West Cork League. He was on and his best behaviour in our chat. Now we didn't have to be about too many swears. I don't think he even swore at all. So he was on. Um, he was in he was in good form as he was chatted about the importance of the win against the Memory Town, what it means to to him and his team. But also looking forward to an exciting few weeks ahead, both in the league and the cup. We're joined now on the Star Sport Podcast by Clannock Kilty Soccer Club manager John Leahy to look back and reflect on their superb Beamish Cup semi-final, sem- semifinal win last weekend and also look ahead to the, the next couple of weeks in a busy West Cork League. But first off, John, congrats on a, like I said, there, a, a 
very important Beamish Cup semi final win last weekend beat Dunmanway Town the reigning champions three two in a in a thriller. So first, your your reaction and thoughts to, to that win. Ah, fantastic win! Like for us, for us, for the players anyway, for all the squad, we have like this great win to beat the Manway, as I said, the reigning champions the last two years, and we're going for the first ever West Cork team to do three in a row in Beamish Cup, like. And so, like, you know, for the lads to beat them, no, it's, it's fantastic. Like, but as I said, they put it up to us. It was, it was absolutely a great game for West Cork League soccer and everything. Like, it was, it was played good sporting game. Mm. 11 minutes injury time, but I don't know where that came from, but my nerves were shattered at the end, but it was great to get there. Look, we're, we're in the final again. It's 50-50 again, but look, fair play to the man. They've been great champions the last few years, and like we're also fighting for a league title as well, Like, and you never know what will happen out here. Just for a bit of context for our listeners, um, like like John said there, that the Dunmanway Town were going for the three in a row, but they'd beaten Clan of Kilty Soccer Club in the previous two Beamish Cup finals. So this semi-final was a meeting of the, I suppose, the top two teams in this competition over the last couple of years. And like you said there, to beat Dunmanway Town, there must be a psychological boost off that because, like we said, they got the better of Clan in the last two Beamish Cup finals, but you've knocked out the, the reigning champions. So there must be a pep in the step going into the Beamish Cup final against Lyre. Oh yeah, to, it, like it's psychology for lads to get the better. Well, look, we just beat them, and my very odd goal, but to beat them, no, was that's the monkey off the back. I think myself, you know, worth saying that we've won nothing. We've won absolutely nothing, like, and we know what lawyer like, you know. As we said, we're all friends. Let's play J together. They're all drinking buddies, and the managers are only lived up the road for me, Willie and Tom, and you know, it is. But it is good to get over that hurdle with the man where that's monkey off the back. Do you know what I mean? Like, it really, really is caring for us. Like, you know, as a squad, like, you know. How important is the Beamish Cup final? I suppose not just to Clan, but to all clubs in the West Cork League. Oh, it's it's huge. It's huge. Like, I, I myself personally won it back in 95 um, when we beat Richmond in the final as our first Beamish Cup. And Beamish Cup, if you're involved in soccer in West Cork League, and I've been involved... A long, long time here. Today, even before we were born, I say. But uh, it, it's huge. Like, like it was, you know, it's the Flo Griffin Cup before, or Fro Crowley Cup, and now the Beamish Cup. It's huge. It's for everyone playing soccer in West Cork League. It's it, they want to get there, like you know. And we're just privileged ourselves as a squad. We've got our three years in a row. It's our third year in a row getting there, like, and the lads got to seize the opportunity. To get that they've been they've given themselves no this year again, like you know, as a lawyer, like you know. Like you mentioned, it's Lawyer So in the final in a couple of weeks' time. Lawyer got the better of Riverside in their semi-final last weekend. So what can Clan do to make it third time lucky, John? <laughs> Play the best of our ability and use our squad like we always do. And hopefully don't be like Mayo. <laughs> hopefully we won't be the Mayo of the West Cork League. Do you know? I actually, but we need to play it 110% to our ability <laughs> and use our squad the way we should use our squad, like, you know, and hopefully with a few injuries and hopefully they'll be clear by then. But as I said, Karen, we're going for the league as well. Like, and we have a tough game against Mizzen on Sunday, like, and that's going to be no easy game against Mizzen and Daniel O'Callaghan's team, like, as usual. Like, but, you know, hopefully we're not going to be the Mayo or the Buffalo Bills of the NFL. Hopefully, you know, as Gerald laughed at me, your fellow reporter from the <laughs> Southern Star, Gerald laughed at me yesterday. It's like even that reference to the Buffalo Bills. I'm thinking back to the '90s. Was it four in a Super Bowls in a row that they came up short? Yeah. And like in, like, and I think you were telling Joe after, like, you don't want Clan Kitty Soccer Club to be the Buffalo Bills of the West Cork League, is it? Yeah, that exactly. As a, like myself and Joe NFL fans as well. Like, and he knew what I was on about straight away. Like the last four Super Bowls in a row, like you know. So, but no, no, we're there. We're there in merit. We're there in merit again this year. Like, and we deserve to be in the final. Do you know? Because I think we we played well. We went away to Bunratty, who are. I admit a good up and coming young young squad with Dan McSweeney in charge, and they I give them a couple of years and they'll rattle everything. But we're just you know the, the hunger's there this year. The hunger, you know, the, the clubs. This club joined up as you, as you know yourself two years ago. And the lads are brilliant. The whole squad is fantastic. Like and the hunger's there now to to be as good as Dreen at the men everything. Like you know, okay. Talking of Dreen and Dunmanway, and you mentioned it earlier as well, uh, Clannacilty are really in the middle of a Premier Division title fight as well. So just for the standings at the moment, I was looking at the table. So Dreen lead the way. They're on 35 points, but they have 15 games played. And Clannacilty are second on 25 points with 11 games played. So four games in hand there. They can't discount Dunmanway Town either. They're also on 25 points, but they have 12 games played. So it's, it's shaping up to be a, an epic finish to the Premier Division campaign, John. Oh, absolutely! I said, could this could go through the wire? Like, you know, I know we have a few games to catch up on over being over a good run in the Munster Junior Cup, 
But uh, yeah, like as I said, every game now from now to the end of the season, the cup final is a cup, and you know, hopefully, injury, a few injuries we have it clear up. But every game, as I said, we're just focused on missing the Sunday now. You know, people might laugh at me, but that's our next focus. It's not the Beamish Cup final, it's missing 11 o'clock from there or Sunday. Like, that's our next game now. Because when you're looking at this, sort of like, like I said, I would say one thing, sorry, Karen. Um, Drina are in the Drina would be fair, but some way, obviously, you know. Because I was going to ask you that, Drina have the points on the board. They're 10 points ahead. ahead. Clan have the four games in hand. Like, What's the best, best position to be in there? Like, To have those points on the board or to have have your fate in your own hands with those games to play? Oh, I still have the points on the board. Mm. I really, really, really would. like Because Drina, no, I think I'm a lawyer this week, this Friday night. I think coming good Friday night. Yeah, I still have the points on the board. Like I've done it before when we got promoted before. I always better have points on the board. But you never know. It's a still funny old season yet, you know. And, and you actually find in as well, John, that the, 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 the good one in the Beamish Cup is almost feeding into your, your good form in the league as well. Like that one, one's helping the other. Like there's momentum behind the team right now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's the same in the Monster Junior Cup that really helped us, like playing City teams and playing Clan Melton, which I thought we were very unlucky uh, to get a result there. It, same as Trina. I, I think every West Cork League Cup should go in the Monster Junior Cup because it builds boost. Like, because the City teams are, they think they're better than the West Cork teams because they think we're all gay heads down here. Like, but. I did the three city teams that we've beaten this year. Like I, we were miles over them. Like and have done the same in times as past as well. But you know, hopefully, you know, so long as injuries are the main thing. No, like you know, big big thing for us. Like you know, injury free. Hopefully, and like you said, the next game up for you is Mizzen on Sunday morning. So is all the focus right now on that game? Get three points mm-hmm. on the board and just keep mm-hmm. the pressure on Drina. Nothing else. Nothing else is normal. No, there's nothing. I'm not even worried about the Beamish Cup at the moment. It's in the back of my head. It's just just missing. And what team to pick Sunday? And hopefully, a few injury lads won't be playing. But it's just that's our focus completely. You know, is missing and trying to get as you laugh. I'm trying to get my lines right and line properly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, as well <laughs> as well as that, John. Then we're just we're just talking about obviously beating Dunmanway Town in the Beamish Cup semi final. Great boost. But look at the league over the last couple of weeks. He beat Dunmanway Town in the league as well. When your title rivals, you drew with Trina there not too long ago either. So, like, you're more than holding your own against the top teams. But do, do you feel this is the season where it's all starting to come together? Like, you found your feet over the last couple of years, uh, but mm. now you can start to see the team grow and develop and, and almost evolve into the team that you know they can be. Yeah, uh, it's spot on, Kieran. I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, yeah. I think the last couple, we won a couple of cups, the Parkway Cup and the Garrett Driscoll Premier Cup, which is fantastic. But yeah, it's, it's, it's taken this time for a team to settle, like, and you know where years gone by you mightn't have the bench to bring on but no I have six or seven fellas who can play in any position and there's no one giving out if they're not starting they'll be playing the week after but it's, it's starting to click a bit like you know hopefully like so hopefully things you know it's as I said it's a squad game and it's in the lads hands all I can do is pick the team and hope for the best but it's starting to click it really is and we are a good decent football team I would admit that we are a good football team and how much you are you enjoying this season? I'm not too bad. I, I've really mellowed in my old age. Carol, tell you that. Like, <laughs> my days are gone for me you now. I'm getting too old. I'm 15, two weeks time, Karen. So, you know, I'm starting to mellow a bit. Like, you know, I still get nervous. Like, but, you know, I was very calm this Sunday. Usually I've been bagging nervous before a game, but not this Sunday. I was, and I had, I just had this thing in my head, we're going to win. Like, I just, I, I knew we'd win. Like, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm very calm. Very calm these days. And even just doesn't back. Needs to be here, you? <laughs> so like you're you're that you're that, that, that ice cool persona and decided to feel so when it's when it's red red hot on the pitch, your ice cool off it, so is it? Well, I can hide my emotions better than most. I put it that way. Too. And yeah, I'd be calm enough. I'm, I'm, I'm mellowed over the years, like you know. When you know when you know Driscoll saw got a sixty six minute winner the last day, even though we didn't know it was the 66, 66 minute winner, I was going through your mind because it was a like I said, it was an epic up to then, like kind of one nil, one all, two one, two all, and then Ian got the, the goal to put you three two up, kind of still Jesus we're still twenty-five minutes to go. So what was going through your mm. head? Uh, just be solid. It's mostly about being it, I'm, as an ex-defender myself, it's always about being solid in defense. Like don't do silly, 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 stupid things like you know. As I always say, if in doubt, get it out. You know, it's you know, but uh, as you said, you know, just yesterday, like that man is, I mean, exceptional. Yesterday, he got split open, he went back, and it was 11 minutes injury time. And I said to the man, we got four frees close in, and he, he cleared every one of them. What he said, like, I mean, the man was on natural yesterday, and I, and I don't like picking out people, like, I just don't like doing it. But 
there was a thunder bastard from uh, Mark Buckley that did hit the bar, but they defended well in the last 25 and we caught him on the break. But I was kind of down the other side of the pitch because my son Jonathan got injured. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of down that side of the pitch because I, I was actually trying to watch over his injury. Like, and uh, we held well. I think we done well. We gave away some silly freeze, but the pressure was an 11 minutes injury. And God, I'm always having where that came from. And Mark Buckley did come on in, like, with the last quarter of an hour, and he caused a bit of hassle because he's a class soccer player, like, you know. And I was reading Jerry McCarthy's report on the game, like, th- th- that comes through, the pressure that the men who put you in in that final quarter, but you had the character and the resolve and the resilience just to hold out the best that they could throw at him. So that's a good kind of gut check of this kind of guilty team, like, faced with the pressure from the reigning champions who were going all out to stay in the cup, but, but Clan held firm when it mattered most. Yeah, they did. We did. We did. We defended fantastically. Like the whole squad and the lads that came on and everything were exceptional. And they did the, the, the simple. I'm all about doing the simple things right. No matter what sport you play, and if you do the simple things right, you won't put yourself under that much pressure. Like you know, it's not panic. Don't panic. You know? Then again, I'm old. Like and I don't panic tomorrow. No like but don't panic. Don't panic. It's the main thing. But the man we did put us under extreme pressure there, and it was for the 11 minutes of injury time. They piled it on. Like in fairness to them, like they 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 bowed out as true champions. I think myself. Like. You know, and we're very sporting after the game. Everyone shook hands. There's nothing bad or nothing like, and wished us best of luck and everything, which is proper champions, champions like would do, like, you know. Isn't it great for the West Cork League now to have Clannock Kilty, to have Dream of in there the last couple of years, to have Dunmanway Town, to have really good teams kind of fighting it out in a in a proper title battle? Like, oh, I think in years past, like, there's been times where Dream have just kind of, they've won the league with, with a bit to spare, but this is a proper title fight and, it, and it's mm-hmm. good football as well. And it's really kind of, it's showing what the West Cork League can offer. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, that's very good point. Dream have run away with a good few leagues, you know, in, in past, but. No, we're starting to close up a small bit. Like, there's a team like the men were there, as I said, Bunratty, who are, who are on their way up, are going to be a very good squad. Lawyer, who are unlucky this year over Jay, are a savage team as well. Like, and it, it just, it's good to have a tight league. I think it's fantastic. Like, you have three teams there, and there's a three way go for a league title. Like, and we all have to play one another as well yet, again. So, we have to play the men way. The men must play Drina, we have to play Drina. So, it's just a long way to go yet. Like, in this, like, you know, so the best, may the best team win that. Hopefully us, but you know we're having a good crack off it anyway. Like I said, there, there's plenty of, of big, big and exciting days left in the in the weeks ahead that, that are left in this season. But thanks so much for joining us on the podcast and best to look in, in, in the weeks ahead in both competitions, John. No bother, Karen. Thanks very much for having me. Thanks very much. Delighted to be joined by Avril Condell of Access Credit Union, who's here to tell us a little bit about cultivate farm finance so avril maybe just give us a brief introduction to what cultivate farm finance actually is so cultivate is a collaboration of 40 credit unions uh, throughout ireland and um, west cork has both access credit union and bantry credit union uh, the loan itself is up to seventy five thousand unsecured uh, for seven years is the max term but obviously can be uh, personalized and customized to each individual's needs um, it's a great facility actually for, for farmers and um, because it covers cash flow and um, machinery purchases like there's a fertilizer crisis now as we know and um, so literally anything that is required for the farm can be covered by this loan. The, the rate is very competitive and uh, we can match the, the repayment term and the um, repayment frequency to each individual farmer depending on their enterprise. Um, and you also have the benefit of the life cover that comes with the credit union loan, which I think is very important for people these days at no extra cost. And if I'm a farmer and I'm listening to you on this podcast today, how can I get involved? So if you're not sure of which credit union um, you're involved with, you can go to Cultivate Credit Union directly, which is www.cultivate-cu.ie or you can phone 1800-839-999. And if Access is your credit union, you can contact me directly. So it's avril at accesscu.ie or you can ring me on 085-268-2727. Right, Kieran, let's talk about this week's Southern Star Sports section. I'm sure it's going to be jam-packed as always, especially given what's been going on in recent weeks. But give us a taster. Don't give it all away, but tease us. Just tease us a little bit. Okay, so let's start with the GA. We have a, and a very topical piece, actually, on the refereeing shortage in Carberry. Um, what happened last weekend, the entire Division 3 Junior Hurling League 
um, schedule was, was postponed because there was no referees to referee the game. So Tom Lyons has chatted to Carby GA chairman Aidan O'Rourke and referee coordinator Donald Charlton just to get an update and the latest on the refereeing shortage in Carby GA. And it, it is quite concerning. So um, that's well worth checking out. Also, the car curlers are kicking off their Munster Championship campaign this Sunday, Parky Cueve, 4 p.m. And we chat to Kieran Kingston, the car curling manager, about that. Disappointment for the car camogie team. Last weekend in the Division 1 League final, they lost again to Galway. Um, Galway, who are now All-Ireland champions and league champions. So we have a, a two-page spread on that, reaction, analysis, match report, and so on. We've also the, the latest on the Carberry Under-21 Hurling Championship. So delighted to welcome back the Carberry GNU section is back in from this week as well. And, and that's a great one for the Gales of of West Cork because it's all the, the latest Carby GA news. Um, so that's well worth checking out. Of course, we have a two-page coverage of the Beamish Cup semi-finals last weekend. We have the latest in the rugby as well. So I want to wish the Skibbereen women's rugby team the best of luck. They're hoping to make it a good Friday when they take on Water Park in the women's division two cup final. Um, that's at Musgrave Park this Friday. And that Skib women's team have already won two titles in the last couple of weeks. So they're looking to make it a terrific treble. So with that and, and a lot, lot more. So there's plenty going on. Um, it's excellent. Ah, absolutely exquisite pun, Kieran, to wrap up this week's Easter Star Sport podcast. We probably should have discussed this offline, but uh, I'm actually on annual leave next week. So unless we record another podcast podcast tomorrow, we're probably going to have to be taking a week off, but we'll see if we can arrange something in the meantime. But if you can't make it to the shops this week, you can pick up a subscription to the Southern Stars e-paper on our website. Go to www.southernstar.ie forward slash e-paper and read the Southern Star on your computer, tablet or smartphone for less than two euro per week. Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast. As I said, I'm not 100% sure if we'll be back at the same time next week, but we'll probably arrange something, even though I'm going to be off from Friday, so I'm not making any promises. If you enjoy these shows, please make sure to rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Slán